Night walking around the streets. I mean, late night walking in the streets of New York. Yeah. Mainly because I was a late night uh, drinker, you know, hanging out in bars. And often I didn't have, I would be, say, say I lived in Chelsea, and I'd be drinking downtown in Tribeca, in uh, like Puffy's or one of those places, and would literally spend all my money and, and have to walk. So one night I met a woman who took me to her apartment in, the, in around McDougal Street. And I had a dog at the time, and his name was Spot. I was walking the dog, the dog had been out with me. And um, as it was in those days, I guess this would be in the 70s, I went home with someone I just casually met in a bar and, and we went to bed. Uh, and oddly though, I was asked to leave at four in the morning, you know, which is not typical, but can't sleep with someone, so I was forced. As soon as I hit the street, and I traveled around New York at night so often, I never had any fear, but as soon as I hit the street with my dog spot, the fear was on me, I had a paranoia. I knew that something was wrong. It was just something, there was something in the air that was wrong, which was unusual for me. I'm not a paranoid, I'm usually not afraid. And when I got to Perry Street, there was someone there on my street by my house. And as I started to walk past, I could see him coming closer and closer to me. And so I crossed to the other side of the street and he came following me that way. And I crossed again diagonally this way and they were coming closer and closer. Now I'm a big guy, I figured, you know, somebody, and I'm with a dog, somebody has something, something working for them well that they're going to come after me. And um, so I was very scared. So I just decided the best thing to do was to run. <laughs> so I turned. And I said, I said, right in front of my house. I said, I can't go home. It's between me and my house. And I started screaming. I turned around and I said, you're coming too fast on me. And I started running and screaming, spot, spot. And spot and I ran down the street. And that was it. It was a day. Uh, all the big ships were coming into the harbor from all the different countries, big white hull, four-master training ships, sailing ships, everything. And fireworks, it was a whole show. And we were on a roof on the river uh, somewhere in Tribeca area, I believe, with Susan Poshek, who was uh, one of the great loves of my life uh, at the time. And uh, we, uh, I guess we got very drunk and we partied all day and all night. And when we finally wandered back up to my apartment on 19th Street, the same apartment, there was, uh, we went upstairs, it was on the third floor. There was, uh, the door was off the hinges. And when I went in, everything was gone. <laughs> I mean, everything. You know, my stereo, my jar of pennies, the, the entire, you know, uh, how, I mean, my bed was there. And when the police came, we were just uh, you know, lying there under the covers and uh, talking to police. <laughs> they couldn't get the door back on. And what I found out that day uh, from a neighbor across the street is that uh, someone who she'd observed, some, uh, some guy, going from apartment to apartment doing all these robberies. And she'd done nothing about it. She didn't call the police. So it was, it was very odd. I said, what about my stereo? She said, well, I saw him try to sell it on the street and he, a cab stopped, but they, he threw it on the road and uh, he didn't know what happened to it. So that was the end of that. George frustrated the fact that he was stuck in a job uh, at New York University in the student loan department. Couldn't get tenure because then he was a classics professor. Um, you know, he, he, he knew classic Greek, Latin, and you know, they would only given him a couple of classes. So at one of their parties, which I was attending, and, and his Chinese girlfriend, Tina, he got very drunk. He was a drinker, he was Irish. And in the course of the party, decided to take it out on his entire, the company of his, in his office. And a scream scene ensued in which he, you know, went absolutely crazy and called them Philistines and, and then ran into the bathroom and I, I was following him, trying to calm him down and get him out of there. And he tore the, the, the hand towels off the wall and uh, had to be restrained. They called those the security and they had him down on the floor. And then I jumped on top of him and held him down. And finally we, loaded him into a taxi, you know, literally he was unconscious for a while, and pushed him in, Tina and I dragged him into a cab and took him to my house on, uh, in Chelsea on 19th Street. And that's where we 
got all settled back down, and I made him a dinner, and you know, we drank some wine again. And after dinner, we were in the kitchen, and he was uh, very unnerved, and he wanted to uh, calm down. And we were put drinking wine, and then I had dinner. But he said, "Could you? Do you have a Valium? I'm very, very upset. I'm very nervous." And I went in my bathroom, and I found a Valium, and brought it into the kitchen. And I said, "Here." And as he reached out. And just at the second, the moment we touched, poof, the lights went out. It was the big blackout of New York City.